Good morning, everyone. Welcome to NOW. NOW is, uh, stands for No Other Way, and that means we are not starting our day any other way but at the feet of Jesus. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really don't have anything for you this morning. Um, I did want to let you all know two things and I actually just forgot those two. Wow. Oh, mercy. Um, yesterday we should have been practicing mercy, right? Um, but I am in Deuteronomy with my personal study and God was telling the Israelites not to be merciful with those that um, were committing sins and things like that. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to make sure that you all are not extending mercy and compromising in sinful situations, all right? Extend mercy to those that are ignorant, don't know any better, things like that. Not to those that are outright committing sin, all right? So just wanted to put that out there. I forgot the second thing. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this morning thanking you and praising you for who you are, Lord God. Thanking you for your love, your kindness, your tender mercies, Lord God. Your mercies, Father, your mercies. Please let us know, Father, how to be just as merciful as you are, Lord God. We may never get there, Father, but we can strive to be there. We come to you on this day, Lord God, sitting at your feet early in the morning, Lord God, before we start our day, and asking, Father, that you would just watch over us, teach us, Lord God, as only you can do, Father, using one word, Lord God, to minister unto whomever is listening, Father, as well as myself, Lord God, who's speaking. And so I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit, Lord God, would speak through me, Father, to the audience. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so we are starting with Genesis chapter 24 on today. And 24 is kind of a long one, but it's all good, right? And so we are reading verses 1 through 4, and I'm reading from the King James Version. They read as follows. And Abraham was old and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom, I'm, who, whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. All right, so yesterday uh, Sarah had passed away. He ended up burying her in the cave of Machpelah. And so now we have chapter 24 all right and so verse 1 and Abraham was old and well stricken in age and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things and Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had put I pray thee thy hand under my thigh all right don't know if this is still Eleazar or if Eleazar has passed away and there is now another servant that is the one that is over everything that he has nevertheless he's telling him hey come over here I got something to talk to you about put your hand under my thigh and I will make thee swear by the Lord the God of heaven and the God of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell all right so under my thigh put your hand under my thigh this one bugged me and so I did some research and again you have to make sure that when we are studying and we we have to make sure that when we are studying to show ourselves to prove that we don't take things just because a couple of people say them on the internet we really need to do research right and so I was trying to find out why why the hand under the thigh and so if we well first off thigh in the Hebrew is yarek yarek and it means to be soft all right so it was named because of the soft portion of your leg and so if we go over to Genesis chapter 32 verse 25 it reads as follows Genesis 32 and we'll start at 24 and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of his thigh and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day breaketh and he said I will not let thee go except thou bless me and he said unto him what is thy name 
and he said Jacob and he said thy name shall be called no more Jacob but Israel for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed all right and so this is a lot of those he's and he's and he's and who are we talking about when we say this he and that he right and so <clears throat> reading this and studying this Jacob is wrestling with what we um, learn is an angel and while he's wrestling with the angel the angel at the moment is not prevailing right and so he touches the hollow of Jacob's thigh all right which basically is the thigh itself um, the bone inside is supposedly um, hollow okay so he touches the the hollow of Jacob's thigh and basically he puts it out of joint okay if you continue reading then you'll see that but what he does also is he changes Jacob's name to Israel right Israel and um, Israel actually means God prevails and so Israel or Jacob is not God but it's a reminder for two things one is that God prevailed against Jacob and then two it's a reminder to the other nations that the nation of Israel um, God will have them prevail regardless of what happens okay and so this thigh again was still puzzling it's like okay I get that but why the thigh why am I putting my hand under your thigh as an oath right and so if we look at Revelation chapter 19 verse 16 we might start with a different verse as well there but Revelation chapter 19 verse 16 and it says and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords all right so this is when Christ comes back the second time I did not ever remember this from before but his name is written on his thigh okay and so what I end up um, when, when God was talking to me explaining to me about this what I end up realizing is that and you see this in pictures too on the internet in order for someone to put their hand under your thigh they have to bend down okay it didn't say put your hand behind my thigh I could be standing up and you could put your hand behind my thigh it says put your hand under my thigh so Abraham is sitting down and this person has to bow down in order to put their hand under the um, under Abraham's thigh okay so this person is bowing this is what's going to happen to every single soul that comes to Christ they will bow down and even those that don't come to Christ all right every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess and so this was a symbol of power okay also a symbol of reverence yes I respect you enough Abraham that I'm going to come and bow down and listen to what you have to say all right so that's the thing about the thigh let's go ahead and keep reading verse 3 and I will make thee swear by the Lord the God of heaven and the God of the earth that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell and so when I just read this this morning um, when we opened up and God was like look Abraham did the same thing that Lot did right Abraham dwelt among those that were not serving God either and I didn't see that uh, until just now so um, it is interesting but he's dwelling among the Canaanites but he's like look yes I'm here but I do not want my daughter-in-law to be one of these women okay verse 4 but thou shalt go unto my country and to my kindred and take a wife unto my son Isaac if you remember several chapters ago Abraham was from Ur of the Chaldees all right and this was an area in Mesopotamia verse 5 and the servant said unto him peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest and Abraham Abraham said unto him beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again all right and so um, Abraham is saying look 
I left there. God called me out of there. Do not take my son back there. And when I was studying this the other day, it was just a caveat. You know, some of you, your parents have um, did everything they could to get you up out of the hood or up out of Vegas or up out of wherever. And they didn't want you going back. And so I'm sure you might be doing the same thing with your children. And this is what um, is happening here. There is a reason, you know, regardless of what we think of parents when we're young, they do have wisdom, all right? And so if your parents are still alive and, you know, they still tell you some things, don't do this, don't do that, you know, that person ain't good for you, whatever, go ahead and listen to them, all right? Or at least find out why they say that. All right, so um, verse 6 said, And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. Verse 7, The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. All right, and so I don't know if this is presumptuous on Abraham's part, Part, or if God has already told him that this is what's going to happen but nevertheless he's like look my God he's gonna go before you all right and so let's uh, nope I don't have anything else all right keep going verse 8 and if the woman will not be willing to follow thee then thou shalt be clear from this my oath only bring not my son thither again all right Abraham is saying go ahead go back to my country if the woman is there and she does not want to come back okay fine you don't have to worry about the oath that you took with me just do not take my son back to Ur of the Chaldees verse 9 and the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swear to him concerning that matter 10 and the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand and he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor all right and so he went he goes to Mesopotamia it says the city of Nahor uh, we'll talk about that actually in a minute so he takes these ten servants uh, these ten camels and uh, he takes also goods from his master and so if you were going to propose to a woman uh, or what have you back in that day you had to bring a dow dowry you had to bring something showing that you could actually take care of this woman okay and so when it says for all the goods of his master were in his hand he controlled all the goods but he didn't take everything and leave Abraham with nothing okay that's not what it's saying he's saying that he went ahead and he took everything that he needed to present to whomever the father was of this lady that he would be meeting okay and then when it says and he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor all right don't forget Nahor was his brother we just talked about him the other day when it was naming off the children that he had by his wife and his concubine right and so he's going to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor I attempted to do research with this and I wasn't satisfied with what I discovered so uh, Mesopotamia we know Ur of the Chaldees no doubt but when it says unto the city of Nahor the internet does not really talk about the city of Nahor later on in the Bible we see that um, that lady that he's going to end up getting says uh, she was from Padan Aram okay and so Padanaram and Nahor, yes, we can say are one and the same. But there were people or, or places on the internet that called the city of Nahor Haran. And that's not my understanding. Because when we studied this before, when Terah, Abraham's father, took Lot, Sarah, and Abraham, he was the one that took them to Haran all right and Haran was the name of his other son that passed away Lot's dad okay and so he took him to the city of Haran Haran was a child Nahor was a child they both had different places that they lived 
people on the internet are trying to say that that was the same place or that Nahor ended up really in Haran and so when it all said all this to say I was trying to find the distance between the land of Canaan where Abraham is now and the city of Nahor and I didn't like anything that I found all right everything was talking about to Haran so let's go ahead and close out and see what happens on tomorrow Heavenly Father we come to you on this day Lord God not presuming that we will be here on tomorrow Lord God but Lord willing if we are father help us out Lord God with the the rest of the study on tomorrow father we ask in the name of Jesus that you would protect us on this day Lord God protect our minds protect our hearts Lord God protect our bodies father we ask in the name of Jesus that you would protect our loved ones Lord God that you would protect Ukraine Lord God that you would be Lord God with Putin father we pray Lord God for salvation for him Lord for salvation for him Lord Lord there's nothing too hard for you there is nothing too hard for you Lord God you showed us that on the road to Damascus with Paul father one that was persecuting your your people father and so we know Lord God that the same thing that you did for Paul Lord that you can do for Putin father we ask in the name of Jesus that you would just continue to be with us throughout this day in Jesus name we pray amen all right I love you all and Lord willing I will see you all tomorrow